If there's one thing that I've been getting into more and more recently, it's bigger screens. The stay or work at home lifestyle has given way to larger form factors and they've become mainstays in my everyday life. And while they might be a little bit unwieldy, let's say at times, they've been quite welcome for enjoyment and gaming. For an easier time getting that big screen experience without taking up too much floor space, well, projectors are a great alternative, but they do come with some of their own quirks. Here is a perfect example. This somewhat, let's say, bulky form factor is certainly smaller than your average television, but often the specs just don't hold a candle to what real TVs offer. Not to mention, they require a pretty specific environment to really be effective. What if a projector like this could not only shrink down the form factor, but become something that is useful in its main and multiple other scenes and scenarios? Well, that might be what Samsung has actually achieved, and the result is one of my favorite big screen experiences yet. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This right in front of me is the Samsung Freestyle Projector. In this video, sponsored by Samsung, I'm going to go through why this projector has just been a blast to use. It has just been announced at CES 2022, and I had the opportunity to use one of the pre-production units over the last number of days. And what struck me immediately regarding the Freestyle is its design. A deceivingly small form factor puts out a ton of light up power, which we'll get to later. Before even powering up the freestyle though, this small size shows the projector lamp on the business end, right here, with touch sensitive buttons around it. The cylindrical shape has a bunch of air and heat vents, which are probably pretty obvious to have on a projector, and on the side there are actually a couple of inputs. There is a toggle to mute the microphone, it's right above the USB-C port that is used to power the projector because there's no battery built in. Now, I will admit that a built-in battery would have been nice for ultimate portability, but that probably would have made this little projector much bigger. Now the freestyle does need to be plugged in at all times, but at least you can do so with a power bank, so that portable scenario is still basically possible. And finally, Finally, there is a micro HDMI port, which is another bulk saving choice that allows you to add extra inputs. And you know, I'm going to be gaming on this projector. Honestly, the Freestyle's design is just simply delightful. An unobtrusive design that fits right into minimalist setups like the corner of my very desk. It actually looks nice and has plenty of versatility because of this built-in stand. You can actually take that stand off and it reveals a couple of tripod screw mounts, which come in really handy for me because I have so many places where it can be put. The stand is really minimal, which means you can't put the Freestyle in a ton of places already, but further freedom when it comes to those angles is welcome. No matter how you stand or mount the projector, the whole experience is automatically adjusted though. Now you can always just do manual adjustments like I'm about to, just so you can make everything stay put. But a majority of the time, those adjustments perform just right to get an enjoyable image. And that image is indeed pretty incredible. Projectors of this form factor, even ones that might be twice this size, often top out at 720p resolution. But the Freestyle puts out a 1080p image that can blow up to a light canvas of over 75 inches. I actually say that because right over there in the living area here in my office, I actually measured it myself. It's delightfully deceiving how big the effective screen real estate can get when you're just working with something that's literally this small. And the lamp can get pretty damn bright, almost surprisingly so. Most of the time you need every single ambient light source in your room to be turned off to truly enjoy a projector's image. But in my room, the single lamp that I have on barely cut into my ability to have a workable image projected on the wall opposite my desk. In the settings, the brightness level tops out at a value of 50, which properly combats ambient light. But once the lights are off, even going all the way to zero still provides a nice image. And so powering all of this is a version of Tizen, Samsung's layer that provides smart TV capabilities via applications, of course, through mirroring and by casting from other devices. Tizen is pretty easy to navigate, even if the interface isn't super snappy compared to other interfaces that I've used on like televisions. The top line shows all of your installed applications where most of my enjoyment enjoyment comes from via services like YouTube, Netflix, and Disney+. But Samsung does keep the channel surfing spirit alive with Samsung TV+. Free OTT content is actually pretty abundant on the internet, and if you somehow find yourself at the end of your own content library, you can always turn to TV+, to find something to have in the background. Or you can just plug in a console and get playing. Let me gush for a second here. Look at this shot. This is the Xbox Series S, already a pretty small console, right next to an even smaller projector, and I'm playing everything using these two devices on a 75-inch image. 
Now it might top out at 1080p resolution and it doesn't have high refresh rate, but the enjoyment is still at a very good high with titles like Forza Horizon properly rendered via the colorful output. Image settings do include different color modes, but for gaming, like right here, I go to dynamic, which includes some motion smoothening, which I do dial down a little bit and higher contrast output. As far as projectors go, there's plenty of room to customize the image output so that you'll get a great experience no matter what you're doing. So as a projector, there's already a lot to love about the freestyle. Samsung did a great job putting together a set of specs that dwarf quite a few competitors, all in a form factor that undercuts the larger designs that you might be used to. But if there's one thing that I enjoy most about good tech, it's when it can be used for multiple scenarios effectively. You can kind of see it happening right behind me. But first, from just the viewing standpoint, I can't think of any other small form factor projector that can be projected onto the ceiling this easily. You know what? That's been a chunk of my time with the freestyle. I have it pointed right up at my ceiling so that I can watch G4 TV while in bed. And because the autofocus and keystone adjustments are so effective, any of these angles are still translated into a flat and proper final shape. But what if you don't necessarily need to watch something or even watch what's playing at the time? The Freestyle is also a smart assistant speaker with quite good sound output and a microphone for catching those hot words. My early look at the unit gave me a choice between Bixby and Amazon Alexa as the available assistants, both of which are hot word accessible, but are also available via the included remote. You simply have to press this microphone button, hold it down, and you'll be able to put your query into either of the assistants. By the way, this remote is just pretty simple to use, provide shortcuts to major streaming services, and of course you have that home button in the middle that can serve as your quick settings shortcut via a press and hold. Now while a small sound unit like this probably won't provide extraordinary lower ends and bass, it's plenty loud and definitely fine for dialogue and spoken content. That Bluetooth connection may be the most ideal for listening enjoyment, but the sound is plenty for voice activated content that you probably would have accessed on any other smart speaker. Only this smart speaker is able to do so much more. And finally, Samsung did put in some extra fun into the freestyle by making it a bit expandable. You can kind of see it happening right behind me. There's a cover that is included for the front end of the projector. It's obviously there to protect the lens and the lamp, but it's also there to make this its own ambient light source. I mean, there's an ambient mode in the Tizen interface that allows the freestyle to become a decorative piece. You've been seeing it behind me this entire time. You simply project something onto the wall or onto something to add to the ambiance or to provide the decor for an occasion like, say, a birthday. You can even project personal photos for a photo frame that you can pull up on demand. And as you can see here, there are prism animations that might look kind of gnarly on their own, but once you add this prism cover on the projector, the colors provide really nice and very, very ambient mood lighting. Actually putting this cover on while anything is playing is kind of worth doing, especially if you're not trying to watch something but you do want that audio to be in the background. It's certainly a nice feature for someone like me who has like practical lights on in the background of my videos and when I'm ready to just have some fun, well I could just take that cover off, move the small projector to anywhere that I want so I can watch or play to my heart's content. There is one last thing I want to mention though, and it's an accessory that I wasn't able to try out this time. It's called the socket module. Now the bottom of this unit has these contacts here, and they're for connecting a bottom piece, one that can actually screw into a typical light socket. If you have a lamp with, let's say, like an adjustable neck, that means that the freestyle can be put onto there and it can be freely positioned and angled. You can imagine what the possibilities are. Even angle this projector downward to make it easy to view a tutorial or a learning companion right there on your desk. And that's something that could come in handy for like remote learning applications. The socket module will be made available in select markets though, so it's good that the tripod mounts are still there if the module is not available in your region. So while I wasn't really able to show it to you in this video, it's another example of how Samsung is trying to create even more scenarios where a powerful projector like this can be useful and ultimately very enjoyable. And really, that's my main takeaway with the Samsung Freestyle. Projectors, typically rigid in their use cases and their utility, are now in a form factor that make them one of the most versatile and ultimately fun products that you can use. Like I said before, big screens are undoubtedly a good time, and projectors are a great way of achieving that without having to take up so much room. But it isn't until the freestyle that I've had one actually inject itself so easily into my already crowded tech life. Projectors that put out this kind of quality are often way bigger in their size and their form, so Samsung gets a lot of credit for shrinking all of that down into a good looking design. 
But with all of that said, it is still a premium media consumption product, so its price will rival those projectors that match it in resolution, brightness, and feature sets. But if you find yourself using it in a myriad of different ways outside of just the core experience, well then, the term freestyle just makes perfect sense. A big thanks again to Samsung for sponsoring this video and for letting me try this exciting product that was literally just announced at CES 2022. For more on the Samsung Freestyle when I finally get my hands on a final retail unit, you can make sure to subscribe to my channel and look forward to all of that. Sound off by hitting the like button and by getting into the comment sections down below. But from there, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.